Hi, this is Happy Bird from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm going to show you how to make some beautiful little ornaments out of the Dollar Tree um, silver plasticware. Now, um, for, out of each package you'll get four spoons and there are also four knives and four forks and I'll show you what you can do with these at the end of the video but for now we're just working uh, with the spoons and um, so before I show you what I did I'm going to show you a couple of ornaments that I made out of those lightweight plastic spoons this is kind of a vintage look I guess you would call it so, so easy to put together. All you have to do is go into your craft stash and pull out your charms, um, rhinestone, pearls, uh, any kind of little piece that you can find. And you just kind of put them together. Now, um, I used E6000 to glue the bale and all of these pieces here because I wanted it to really really hold and it is, it is nice and rock solid. Um, this was very easy. I just cut the tip of the spoon off with wire cutters and it just cut through it just like butter and then I put the bale on, just glued that on and I glued a little resin heart in the front. I found those on eBay. They were about 40 pieces for a dollar and that was free shipping too and I glued one on the back. I didn't have to glue one on the back, but I just did. And with a little bird nest charm, I paid um, under a dollar for five pieces. And I drizzled with a little toothpick some of the Mod Podge Super Gloss, one coat gloss finish, in the nest itself. And then I just sprinkled some glitter in there just to kind of bring out um, the little white eggs here or pearls that look like eggs <laughs> and I thought it turned out nice and if you notice this charm and this charm they don't have any loops on them I cut those off with wire cutters too and they cut off real easily and this is a little filigree connector piece in the back and you can pick those up on eBay too now the links that I'm going to give you for the bird's nest and the chain and the charm um, those are just links that I used keep in mind that there are a lot of sellers on eBay that sell the same type of stuff you just have to go in and you know search for it for example you can just type in um, bird nest charms and you'll see a whole bunch of these pop up in different kinds of metals different colors so um, what I did as a rule of thumb <clears throat> is I chose four to five different um, pieces to put into the bowl of the spoon. Now, um, with this particular one, I mean, I don't count the little resin heart, the 12 millimeter resin heart. I just counted what I actually put into the bowl of the spoon. So I have the chain, which is one, two, three and then the filigree behind it is four. So put four pieces into that one. And with this one, this is Tinkerbell, I put one, two, three, the leaf, four, the little heart charm, and then the background filigree piece is five. So put five in that one. So four to five elements if you can kind of keep that in mind um, in the actual bowl of the spoon will look really pretty now I glued um, the little 12 millimeter resin heart in the front here but as you can see I didn't glue it on the back and it doesn't really matter what size your bale is I just get a small or a medium and glue it on the back because um, doesn't matter if it's wider than the neck of the spoon that you cut off or not. So um, I'll show you what I did to get started with these.
I just took one of these spoons and I'm just going to take my wire cutters and cut this off right here to the neck and I'm just going to make sure it's nice and even and straight I think it is if you want to cut off a little more you can do that as well the pieces do fly but um, okay so I'm just going to lay that here alright and then I'm going to choose a bale I could choose a medium or a small, but I think I'm just going to stick with a small. And I glue, of course, all the charms on there, like I said, with E6000, including the bale. I like to use the little jewelry size um, E6000 tubes. I feel like I have better control. So I'm just going to stick it on here and the glue might leak over a little bit. That's fine because we'll just put glitter around that anyway once we glitter up the spoons. Okay. And then once it's on here, basically what I do is um, I get a roll of ribbon. or in this case, mesh, and I just kind of lay it like that on top to dry. Now I have a little trick that really helps speed up a lot of the drying time. Normally you would probably let this sit for 12 hours and dry, but I have a, um, a real small fan and I just um, aim the fan downwards and put it on low and it dries it really nice and solid and rock hard and I did the same thing when I put glitter on the spoons too it just seemed to help I live in a very dry warm area anyway but um, I just you know I wanted to work on these a little quicker instead of waiting for days <laughs> okay so um, I'm going to set this aside And through the magic of video, we have one that's already dried. Now don't worry if there's scratches on the spoon or anything like that. That's not going to matter. Um, so, of course, you're going to need your Mod Podge Super Gloss, the one coat gloss finish. If you can't find this at Michael's, if they're out of it, or Walmart, then you can certainly purchase this online. So I just wanted to let you know that. So I'm going to take a paper towel. And then an extra one for my fingers. I don't use a brush. I don't think it's necessary because this stuff washes off so easily with soap and water. So. I just use my fingers. So um, you can either start with the front or the back. I think I'm just going to start with the front and I'm just going to dip my finger in the, into the Mod Podge gloss, super gloss I should say, and I'm just going to smear it around the bowl of the spoon as well as right to the edge as well as to the top here where the bale is. Okay, so I'm going to wipe my fingers down, putting a pretty good amount in, but I don't want so much that it leaks um, downwards to the bowl of the spoon and makes a big giant lake in the middle of the bowl of the spoon. <laughs> So, 
Um, I want to make um, a pretty blue color and I have already tested that on one of the spoon handles that I broke off and I thought I liked it so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to lay this down and first thing I'm going to use is the tinsel glitter and this one is by Recollections it's called Frost. You can use anything you want but um, a good rule of thumb that I go by when making this is I put on my glitter from darkest first to lightest last. So this is the darkest of the glitter and I'm just going to shake some like this Okay. Now I'm not covering it, as you can tell. I am just sprinkled some, but I didn't cover it with that because I'm going to be using more glitter. Okay, so the next lightest would be this silver white type glitter. I don't think there's a name to it. Um, it's by Heidi Swap. It's called Marquee Love. And I bought this at Michael's, but I've seen them at other um, craft stores as well. So. I'm going to be sprinkling that on top like that. Not covering it, but and then the next one I'm using is the next lightest. It's kind of a real pretty iridescent color. It's by Creatology. And the cap is all messed up. It was that way when I bought it and I didn't notice it. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkling some of that on. Just going to kind of roll this around like that. Okay. Now this is the very last. It's the jumbo glitter I talked about in um, a couple of my other videos. And they sell this on eBay. Jumbo glitter. I've seen it at Joann's, and I've seen this um, on eBay. It's called Hexagon Glitter. It's nail glitter is what it is. So I like to pour a little bit of this into my cap here because I don't like wasting a whole lot of that. Now, um, at the very, very last, I like to use some kind of real super light iridescent fine glitter. It kind of gets into all the the cracks that the chunkier glitter didn't get into. Just kind of turn it around there. I'm not wiping. I'm just kind of pushing in some of the glitter that's hanging on the edges. Isn't that looking pretty? Okay, now what I like to do is um, pour a little bit of the Mod Podge into a little bottle cap here. I don't like to dip my finger at this point in the Mod Podge because you'll get glitter in there for sure. Just the tiniest amount, actually. See how tiny that amount is? I'll show you what I'll do with that in a moment. I just take my finger, like that, and I don't rub it around. I just kind of dab like this in the spoon. You're going to see some glitter on my finger. But I'm putting it into the cap here, so it doesn't really matter to me. Okay. Alright. Just going to put a little more here. You can just kind of play with it, you know. Okay. So now I'm going to be picking up some of this and putting quite a bit of this in. This is my craft, um, 
my regular craft supply here. I love this stuff. And I'll just keep doing this. Okay. Put that back. Okay, so. So this is kind of what it looks like, and see I have all of these colors on here, so if I needed extra glitter just to put around, touch up around the sides or something like that, like that, then I have all the colors mixed here. So um, I thought that the front part here turned out really pretty. But we want this to dry rock hard, so I'm going to put it in front of my small fan, and I'm going to let this dry for at least 24 hours because I really, I really want it rock hard before I work on it. And once that dries, we're going to turn it over on the back and do the exact same thing, exact same process. So that'll be. Um, really I think the longest part of doing all of this. Uh, the rest is easy gluing on the charms and just allowing those to dry overnight. So um, we'll go ahead and let this dry and um, when it's rock hard then I'll turn it over and do the back and then I'll show you where we go from there. Okay? Okay so as you can see the glitter is rock hard on this and I did the back too and once both sides were completely finished and dried I went back in with um, my Mod Podge one coat gloss finish here and I just with a very thin coat with my finger I just wiped it like this and when I put it in front of the fan it took about three hours and it dried rock hard and I did the same on the back it probably didn't need it because um, there wasn't any glitter shaking off, but I do that just as an extra precaution with um, all my crafts. So we're going to start by adding some rhinestone chain, and I have the link to this chain if you want to see what I used um, down below in the drop down bar below the video as well as on my blog. So let's see here. Grab this. And I counted out about about 13 of these stones and then I cut it there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm going to take my wire cutters and just cut it right there. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to take one of my bottle caps. And a little toothpick. And I'm going to squirt a little bit of the E6000 glue in this bottle cap. I'm using up what I have left of the little bottles here before I open a new one. Just a little dab here. And I'm just going to take my toothpick and twist it like this and just continue twisting it so there won't be any strings hanging from this glue. Alright. 
and I'm going to start here on the right side of the spoon I should say the right side um, that's facing you and you now this glue seems a little dried out probably maybe because it's older so I'm going to um, get some new glue I'm going to go ahead and open a new little bottle yeah this is much better I think because it came to the end of it and it had been opened that tube had um, it just kinda dried up on me so this is much better and as you can tell it's a little um, softer so um, set this aside, I'll get another toothpick, oh, I'm not going to mess with the other one. Alright, sorry about that. Alright, so, yeah, and see how it has little strings on it like that? That's why you need to twist it. Alright, and then just right along on the right hand side of the spoon, right along the inside edge right here. You're going to put that glue. I'm going to get some more. Twist it. And just go all the way down with this glue to about here. I can pretty much tell about how long it is now because I've done a few of these spoons. So I'm just going to lay this chain like so around the edge and then I'll adjust it once it's on there like so just kind of push it up to where it looks good like about like that Now right now, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to set this in front of my um, fan to dry this part off so I can work with um, the inside. Now um, I'm just going to dry it enough to where it'll stay there and it's not going to fall off like I said, you know, when I do work on the inside. Um, but then I'll put it back uh, under the fan when I have everything in there and dry everything rock hard. Okay, so let me do that and I'm going to wipe this off my fingers. You're really not supposed to have this uh, E6000 on your fingers, but there was a little bit that I noticed that was overflowed in this area. Not a lot, but just a tiny bit. Anyway, um, I'll be Hey back. guys, a real quick note. When I sign off at the end of the video, please don't leave. I have something at the end to show you. Thanks. Okay, so as you can see, I've had this under my fan for about a half an hour and it made it rock hard enough to where I don't have to worry about this coming loose um, when I'm working with the spoon. Now before we start, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a little resin heart in the front, just like this. If you want, you can glue another heart on the back as well, it's up to you. Now this um, fits with the neck of the spoon, but I have used others such as this where um, it has a little heart right here and as you can see from the front, it sticks out over the edges. So what I just do is I glue this on like that and then you can't see the heart. So that's just a little tip. Okay. So I'm just going to take uh, a little more E6000 and put it on top of the dried out E6000. You can use so many different charms and whatnot. And I told you that I got these off eBay. Okay. 
that right at the top, like so. And then um, what I like to do for the background is um, I like to get like a, um, a gold or a brass color type of filigree connector and put it in the back right here of the spoon. It kind of gives it a little bit of a, a background. Now, I do have a seller that I've used on Etsy. I'll include the link as well as a direct link to one of the connectors that um, she carries that can be used in this um, little spoon. So you don't have to purchase it from there. Um, they have many other filigree connectors on eBay um, and other sellers as well. It's just that I've used this seller so um, I know she's good and so that's why I'm providing the link to you. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of mold this, but I'm using another spoon to do it. I'm not going to do it on this one. So I'm just pressing this down, and this is wire, so it should bend pretty easily, and I can tell that it's already fitting nicely in here. If it doesn't, you can always take your flat nose pliers and just kind of bend it a little bit, like this direction, this direction, and just keep bending and fitting until it fits into the spoon. But I think yeah, see this fits nicely. So I'm just going to take some of my E6000 and on the back I'm just going to place it here and there. I'm not going to worry too much about the glue. It's going to dry clear and I will be gluing charms on top of it anyway. But I'm just doing it kind of in the center. Drop that in there. And press down. I think I'm going to use the back of my pencil here to press it down. Like so. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, you, Like I said, you can use a multitude of charms um, or buttons. I will give you a little tip. Stay away from charms that are completely flat. Like this is completely flat. It's not going to show up as well as something with a lot of 3D to it, like this. Of course, I don't know if you can see it on camera. But... Um, this is one of the little charms I got off eBay for really cheap. I think, they were, I, think I paid 99 cents for five of them. I could do something like this. And don't worry about the little holes uh, or the little loops at the tops of the charm because you can cut that off with a wire cutter. Um, just kind of... So we have, we have one, two elements, so we need at least two to three more. Okay? Because I really like that um, four to five element rule because it really, really makes the spoon look pretty. Okay, so I could kind of set this in there like that. Maybe take a little key charm, glue this in like that. Um, maybe a little heart says love, something like that, or I could do, let's see, if you've been with me for a while, you, might, you may remember these little teacup pendant charms that I showed you how to put together. Well, I found one of these in my drawer, so maybe something like that. And I'm just using little craft bits and pieces that I've collected. 
put that in there with maybe a couple of smaller ones at the top. Um, you could definitely put this in as a focal point and then maybe put some pearls around it here or something like that. These are one of my flat back buttons. There's another one. That would be really pretty, wouldn't it? That would be really nice. Um, so you can use so many different things. Let's see. Um, I might, yeah, I might just go ahead and go with this. Now this should be easy enough to just snap off, yeah. I did that pretty easily, so it'll look like that. And I'm going to put a little more A6000 in here. I think I'm going to go with the teacup as being the focal part. a fairly good amount of that on here and I think I'm going to set it right here in the middle to where this will dangle I don't know off to the side maybe up a little but not too much I think this will be okay like that. I may have to... Yeah, now I got the whole thing moving. There we go. I think that looks pretty good about there. And if you want to adjust things, you can always take... Um, a little toothpick and kind of move things around. You can hold it with one toothpick and then move it with your finger or something like that. Okay, so now I think I might like to use this little hummingbird charm. I'd like to put it up here at the top. Maybe I can still do that. It has a little loop. So, let me see if I can cut this off with the little wire cutters. And it looks like I can do that. Yeah, snip that right off. And these are the cheap Dollar Tree cutters, so... Alright, and... I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this. A6000 glue. And put the little hummingbird charm right about here. Now, I think I'm going to put that little love heart right here in the corner. A little more glue. I only put tiny bits of the glue um, out at a time because it does dry fairly quickly. So, with this charm, I'm just going to take off the little um, jump ring. strong gauge jump ring. Okay. And I, th I think I'm going to leave the loop on for this one instead of cutting it off. I think it, it would be fine. I bought a whole package of these charms. There were a ton in there um, from Michael's. I really like them. But of course, if they don't have any more, 
at Michael's. You can still um, buy these online. I've seen plenty of tiny little charms that look just like this. Okay, there we go. So I think I'll put that about here and then maybe adjust it with my toothpick, press it down. Okay, so what do you think? Is it looking nice? So we have one, two, three, four, and then the filigree part is five. So we have five in this spoon. Okay, now I'll make sure, like I said, to put the links that I used for the bird nests, the filigree, the um, the joy charm that I used on this one, of course, the rhinestone chain, I'll have all that. Now, please keep in mind, if you're watching this video years and years from now, <laughs> and the links are no longer there, they're not the only sellers on eBay that sell this type of thing, like I said. Just go into the eBay search bar and type in what you want, you'll find all kinds of things. So I just wanted to let you know that because I have had people in the past private message me or email me to ball me out <laughs> because the link, a certain link no longer worked or a certain place no longer had a certain item. So um, I just want to let you know ahead of time. So, you know, I really enjoyed this, making these little spoons and I'm going to continue to make a few more, but I'm going to stick this under the fan and I'm going to allow this fan to dry this for 24 hours because I want everything on here rock solid. Now it might feel like it's dried and it may feel like it's not going anywhere but um, the longer this um, sets the longer or the harder it will cure. So I really want this to be rock hard. I want to be able to present this as a gift to someone at Christmas without it falling apart. <laughs> And I'll also put a little ribbon or a cord through here. Uh, most likely it will be a ribbon because I've been searching for my silver and gold cord. I've had that for years. I've always put it back in the same place and wouldn't you know it, I can't find it. It's not there and I've torn my craft area apart so I don't know what happened to it. So I may have to buy some more. <laughs> So um, I'll go ahead and allow this to dry under my fan and then I will put a cord through it and I'll take pictures of all of these and post them on my, um, on my blog so you can see them. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you each one of you uh, for sticking with me and God bless you. Take care. Bye bye. Sorry about that guys, I forgot to show you how you can use up your knives and forks that were left over from the Dollar Tree um, plastic silverware packages. So um, one of the ideas that I had out of many was to take, um, for example, your knives and tie it with a bow on top of your wrapped quick breads or cakes that you give people during Christmas. It could be a mini loaf, it could be a regular sized loaf. Um, <clears throat> I like to just, you know, put foil over the, the loaf and just tie a pretty ribbon around it and then put this right on the top, just tie it right into the ribbon with a bow. This was very easy to do. I just took two pieces of tinsel stem and twisted them together like a candy cane and then I just wrapped it around the very top of the knife and um, it came out really cute and you don't need any hot glue or anything because it clings very tightly when you wrap it around. I did put a little hot glue on the sticker just because I didn't want that to fall off but as you can see it's inexpensive and it's a makes a cute presentation. You can do the same thing with your forks um, for Christmas. You, when you serve cake you can set them out. You can do those several different ways. This is just um, some simple snowflake stickers I put at the top of this knife and 
these are just some adhesive bling that I put here or you can um, decorate your forks for other occasions I just took some of the heart Mardi Gras type beads that they sell in packages of three um, during the holidays Dollar Tree usually sells little girl necklaces and stuff so um, you can do a lot of things but um, I don't know I maybe I'll do a tutorial for you guys on how to decorate uh, these little plastic silverware knives forks and spoons for the holidays would you guys like that if so let me know and um, I'll go ahead and make one up and post it sometime before Christmas. All right, thanks a lot, guys. You take care. God bless.